So after you freshly image a node, here are four things I would check right away. First, I would get a remote console, whether plugging into the back with a KVM crash cart or using the out-of-band management, such as IPMI, as an example here. The first thing I would look at, make sure the right version at the top is the expected version that you would want. I also make sure that you should not have an IPv address set at this point. You'd have to go in and either manually set it or use the cluster create to set it. The first command I would issue is the list underscore all underscore nick underscore ports dot sh. There's a couple other list all commands, but that's my favorite, just to make sure the nick ports are all online that I would expect to be online. For you to review that output here, an example, two ports are up, two ports are down. That's expected what we're doing in this situation. Your situation might be a little bit different. You know, ideally, if you have four ports, you would want to use all four ports, but maybe that's not always the case. And sometimes you're going to have a two port card. The next thing I do, I would log into iris underscore CLI and just verify that that is working as expected as well. So if you're still in iris underscore CLI, I'm going to do no space status. Here's the output. What I'm looking for is making sure it runs correctly. I want to make sure that it should not say it's part of a cluster. See, that's why you see the negative one at the top. And also you should notice some basic services running such as iris and such as Nexus. Now with this is all said and done, we could go in and either find the cluster setup page using a no discovery option, or what I like to do is go ahead and manually set an IP address on this first node, and then we can go in, use the IP address, put that in a web browser to get to, to the cluster setup page. The next command I would do is interface space list. In interface list, you wanna know which interfaces belong to which bond. In order to have redundancy, we have two interfaces belong to a bond by default configuration, but you can change that however you see fit for your environment. The next command I would use is node space discover dash free dash nodes. Yes, you can tab complete in this CLI. I'll give this command in the description as well. But in this case, we are looking at creating a cluster. So I want to make sure I can discover my other nodes in that cluster. In this output, we see node two, three, and four listed. So we're on node one, but we're discovering three other nodes. And this is what you would expect in most environments when we have cohesive hardware, it's typically four nodes to a chassis. We are software that can run on pretty much any hardware as long as it's been qualified by our engineering team. So that could be HPE, Cisco, Lenovo, etc. I wanted you to see this output as an example. So I'm going to go ahead and set the IP address on this particular node. So I'm going to use that for my cluster creation. I have another video put in the description. You can see the command here listed on the screen. This is what you would use and you can find it in our documentation as well. Notice here the one in changes. I'm using bond one for my default node to node communication, which typically is bond zero. So I'm going to put the IP address in DUI and then we're going to jump into the cluster setup page. And hit the normal advance and go ahead and proceed and that will get you to the actual login page and use the account admin admin to log in. You'll see that we have one chassis and three nodes discovered and we'll just click on the get started button. Next we're going to select the nodes. In this case we're going to select all three nodes because we want to have a minimum of three nodes to create a cluster. If you have four nodes or multiple chassis you don't necessarily have to select all. It kind of depends on the situation. Next we have the cluster setup page. Notice each field for the IP address of the node and the IPMI field as well. Once that is done click continue to cluster settings. Then you would continue filling out the required fields and optionally I would also include the IPMI information as well. As we're moving along, let's fill out the NTP and that is required. It should be a Linux NTP. You could have public NTP servers depending on your situation. To configure IPv4 apps, just to make sure that IP address is not overlapping your physical node IP addresses. You want to add in your cluster FQDN and then we'll go into the VIP section. Cohesity VIPs is a very important part as far as the networking and user traffic for a Cohesity cluster. You can add them in a range or you can add them one at a time. As best practice, always enable software encryption. This is data at rest encryption. You can use the Cohesity internal or you could also use external AWS or anything that's KMIP compliant. The default is 90 days, but I always recommend setting that to 30 days. Once you hit cluster create, it'll take a minute or two and then you'll get a UI similar to here. You can click show details to see what is going on underneath the covers. Just to give the process some time to complete, you know, such as formatting disk can take a while. So you're best to work on other tasks while this is running in the background. 
When everything's done, you'll get a similar login page that we did before, but notice the cluster name is now displayed instead of the Cohesity dashboard. Use admin admin as before and hit sign in. You'll have to agree to the license and sign your life away. And then you have the ability if you want to license this with Helios or not. We're going to skip this as part of this demo. And then you're going to be asked to change the default admin password of the cluster. And this is very important and we'll make sure that you have to change it as a security improvement. And that's pretty much it, how you create the cluster. So I'm going to go to settings and then summary and additionally click on hardware. This will just give you a list of your hardware details of your cluster. So I walked you through the whole process of things I would check before I create my cluster, how to actually create the cluster, and then just looking at the hardware details at the end. So I hope this was helpful and informative and thanks for watching.